Hey everyone, TGB here. Today I wanted to do a video about chopping. Uh, for those that don't know, chopping in tournaments, specifically we're talking tournaments here, we're not going to talk cash games. Uh, chopping is when you're down to uh, just a few players and instead of playing out the rest of the tournament, uh, the players that are remaining decide to just split up uh, the remaining amount in the prize pool. So imagine there's uh, four players left and there's $10,000 left in the prize pool after, you know, fifth through however many have gotten paid. Uh, instead of playing out the rest of the tournament, those four players would decide to just take $2,500 each. Now, of course, there's different ways you can chop. You can do what's called an ICM chop, which is where you would use um, the independent chip model to go ahead and, and decide how much value each player's stack has. Um, there's a chip chop, which is where each chip is kind of worth a set amount. Uh, so depending on how many chips you get, uh, you get that much money. And then there's just an even chop, um, which is the example I described to you, where with $10,000 uh, in the prize pool left, everyone would just get an even 2500 Now, conventionally, I've always held that I think chopping is uh, very cowardly and just like a poor way to play a poker tournament. There's a number of reasons for this. Uh, the first one being that I think that shorthanded and short stack play uh, as well as ICM knowledge are intricate parts of the game of poker. Uh, as you get down to fewer and fewer players, ranges get wider, which means the poker hands take more knowledge to play because instead of playing against you know tighter ranges when you're dealing with nine max, uh, you're dealing with much, much wider ranges when you're constantly battling from the blinds. Additionally, I think that uh, knowing ICM implications, knowing uh, how Good, what percentage you need to call off or how wide you can shove or things like this. I think they're all very important pieces to study in tournament poker because a lot of your profit, basically near all of your profit, comes from top three finishes uh, over the course of your career. So it's very important, in my opinion, to know these spots and study these spots. And I think chopping in situations where there's you know six people, five people, four people left uh, or even heads up, I think really coals an important part of your game. But more than anything, I've always thought that one of the biggest downsides to chopping is just that the whole point of playing the poker tournament is to get to the exciting part where you're playing for a lot of money and there's a lot of pressure on the line. Uh, you know, you're battling someone heads up or you're three handed and there's, you know, a five figure, six figure sum for first. And I think chopping just like really takes away all the beauty of what a poker tournament is supposed to be. And that's when that's when I want to be in the poker tournament is when there's a lot of pressure is when I need to make a big play or a big bluff or get a huge hand through uh, in order to secure even more money. I would actually originally kind of planned to make this video uh, a very like chopping is dumb, chopping is stupid, bam, bam, like beat it down type video. Uh, but I was, I posted a few questions about chopping and somebody kind of tuned me in, this is Maysville actually, tuned me in to the fact, he said that basically chopping is a skill among itself. So he doesn't view chopping as a cop out, he, had, he views chopping as another element to the game. Uh, similar to something like I've preached extensively uh, on my Twitch stream that I think that the mental game of poker is just as important, if not more important, than your actual skill at the game. So the ability to not tilt when things are going wrong, the ability to continue playing your A game in high pressure situations. Um, even though it's not directly part of the cards, it's absolutely intricate in the game. And Maysville's comment made me realize that chopping, I think, is also part of that. So recognizing when you are at a disadvantage because the players at the table are better than you, and if you can chop, you're going to get more than your fair share of equity. Or just the ability to negotiate a better chop than you deserve ICM-wise. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of players that aren't really going to be ICM familiar, and if you can get them to agree to a chop... Uh, for more than your stack is actually worth, uh, you can probably print a decent chunk of equity uh, and just by getting them to agree to a chop that doesn't favor them. So in conclusion, I'm still very against chopping. I think in the vast majority of situations, I'd much rather play it out. But at the very least, I'm not as upset about chopping as I have been previously because I recognize now that making sure that you get 
your full equity's worth. And if you're a good negotiator, you can even get more from players that aren't uh, in a situation where they want to chop. So I think that chopping is certainly a skill that you can actually work on in your poker game to try and get more from players that do want to chop. Uh, but it's still there's still a part of me that it's just so painful. Like I would never want to chop a tournament just because I really want to play for the win. I really want to attack, 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 and and see if I can put pressure on people and make them lose their chips so that I get the full first prize instead of just a part. I appreciate you hanging out with me today in this video about chopping, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.